way, that way. You are now watching Create a Steady Hustle with Liquid Cash. Cheers, what it is, what it ain't. Sean's truly liquid cash. I need it all out the stash, aka money making Mitch. Hide ya. Uh. All right now, you watching the Creative Steady Hustle Show. It's been a minute, but I'm back. Listen, man, it's been a while because I was out in Jamaica having a good time, enjoying life. I went to go, you know, visit some family, but also I had to, you know, go to my sister's funeral. You know, rest in peace, Samantha. I definitely had to go do that. But on my departure date, I ended up getting sick because, you know, every time I'm in the, you know, these airports and shit, there's a lot of germs going around, you know, and for some reason, every time I go through an airport, I always end up getting a little bit sick. Now, my body felt good, but my voice was gone. One of the biggest weekend of the year, you know what I mean? I lost my voice, man. Super Bowl was off the chain. It was lit. It was uh, everything it was supposed to be. You feel me? Even though I lost my voice, like I said again, my body felt good. So I still end up going to all of the events. Um, went to Dreas, went to uh, Live. You know what I mean? Everything was popping. Everything was definitely turned up. Everybody was in town. Everybody from the Bay. It was one of those type of events you did not want to miss. Super Bowl in Las Vegas ain't nothing bigger than that. You already know. It's a once in a lifetime thing. If the girl was out here, most definitely, she was definitely trying to score a touchdown, you dig? She was definitely trying to get drafted and trying to get chose. Most definitely, it was one of those type of... Uh, <laughs> One of those events, man, where everybody came out, all the uh, the local hood rats, the chicken heads, the the the, the thoughts, the uh, whatever you call them, man, they was out here. The niggas was out here in full effect, fronting and stunting, doing what they do best. You know what I mean? It was one of those type of events you did not want to miss. The Kansas City Chief won the game, won the Super Bowl. It was dope. Usher performed at the Super Bowl. Why not? He had a residency in Las Vegas for years now. So, of course, you know, he was definitely going, you know, going to be chosen to do the Super Bowl. And uh, it was a good performance. I enjoyed it. It was a wonderful event. You know what I mean? Everything was good. I really don't watch football, but I definitely participated, and I checked out the Super Bowl. I had a wonderful time. You know, it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You know, next year, they're going to have the Super Bowl in New Orleans um, in 2025, but um, this 2024, it was a major, major, major event in Las Vegas. You know, a lot of money was being made. A lot of people got... Um, you know, lost you know, lost a lot of money. Cause I don't know. I know some people bet it on the San Francisco's to win, and some people bet it on the, the Chiefs to win. If you bet it on the Chief, you want some money. If you bet it on San Francisco, then you lost some money. You know, and the Bay was out here, like I said, in full effect. So you know a lot of them lost some money. So you know, they turned up in the Cosmo and they turned up in the motherfucking Cromwell. It was definitely going down. A lot of fights was going on, but ain't nobody died. So that's a good thing, you dig? Um as you can see, I got on a three-piece suit inside of it. You know, this is a new episode. I figured, you know, I get fly. I got my voice back. You know, I'm feeling good. I'm drinking tea. It's all good. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to do too much, man. You know, when it comes to the suit, man, I do it just right. And I got to put on the suit because I got to inspire these niggas to, you know, you know what I mean? Just, 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 you know, get suited and booted one time. You feel me? I inspire these niggas to, you know what I mean? Stop, you know, take off the, the, the baggy jeans, take off the, you know, the Jordans and, you know what I mean? Put you, you know, put on some of these flats, man. You know what I mean? Put some of these on, man. It ain't gonna hurt you, man. You feel me? You know what I mean? Get a tie, get a button up. You did get fly one time, man. Switch it up on her, you feel me? She gonna be impressed. You know what I mean? As you can see, man, my suit game is always superb. Like I said again, man, let me do a quick drip report, man. You know, I got polo on the socks, man. I got the bear. Polo on the socks. You feel me? As you can see, the shoes match the, uh, of course, the vest and the tie. You know what I mean? Got the blue suit on. As you can see, nothing too much. You know what I mean? I got the Windsor, you know what I mean? Tie, you feel me? As you can see, got the little scarf. Got the little scorpion right here because I'm a Scorpio. Uh, you see what I got on my face, the Dita glasses. <laughs> they fly, you already know. These was custom made by yours truly. I switched out the lens and 
You know what I mean? You know how I do it, man. Of course, I got Prince with me. He's colder than a polar bear toenail right now. You feel me? Because I got on a suit right now, so you know I had to turn off the AC because I want to definitely, I ain't trying to break a sweat. You feel me? So I got Prince with me. He's chilling right now. I, of course, we matching. You feel me? But I'm going to let him do his thing. He's my co-host right now. I'm going to let him relax. He hasn't ate all day because I've been working. I ain't had time to feed him, but I will feed him. Don't get at me. Y'all got to understand. I'm a busy man. I didn't even eat all day. So, you know, if I don't eat, he definitely not going to eat, man. You know what I'm saying? We eat the same time. You feel me? But I just been on the grind. He going to sleep. He going to chill. And I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to try to give you a classic episode. Matter of fact, we ain't going to try because winners don't try. Try is the first attempt to fail. You know what I mean? We don't try. We do it. You know what I mean? We get it done. That's it. We keep on doing it until we succeed. So this is going to be a classic episode. You feel me? Like I said again, man, this is yours truly, Liquid Cash. And I'm going to give y'all what y'all need, man. Some news you can use. Listen, Valentine's Day just went by. I know everybody was faking and fronting for Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. You know what I mean? I ain't got nothing for Valentine's Day, but it's all good. I don't ever get anything for Valentine's Day. I, you know, I believe some women think men shouldn't get nothing for Valentine's Day, man. What y'all think? Let me know y'all opinion. I did a survey, right? And 92% of the people on my survey said men should receive something on Valentine's Day. Well, why I ain't never received nothing on Valentine's Day in my entire life? I've never received anything. Anything in my entire life on Valentine's Day. Don't feel bad for me. Don't feel sorry for me. I don't give a damn about no goddamn Valentine's Day. I don't give a damn about no Easter Sunday. I don't give a damn about no man-made holiday. That shit fake any motherfucking way, man. Half of the people that celebrate Valentine's Day are fronting. I've never met a nigga in my life that was excited about Valentine's Day. Not one nigga ever said, man, yo, Valentine's Day coming up. I can't wait to see what my shorty got me, man. Valentine's Day coming up. I can't wait to give my shorty a gift. No nigga on this planet give two fucks about Valentine's Day. But we fake it and we front because why? We want to see you happy. We want to make sure that you have a smile on your face on that day so you can show off and you can brag to your friends that your man cares about you. That's the only reason why niggas give you teddy bears and gifts and flowers on Valentine's Day. Because we know you want to show off to your friends that you got a man that care about you. All my life I heard the expressions you got to fake it to make it. But I never really subscribed to that concept because I believe you got to think it to make it. See, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, he can achieve. Change your mind and you can change your life. Take a whiff, I'm the sh uh, I'm the black richie rich. Uh, Do it all on my own. Uh, I ain't never need a because uh, it's all in the wrist. Uh, she in love with the sniff. Uh, I'm in love with the bricks. Uh, like I'm short, like I'm thick. What? Make a bust like the rhyme. What? Only hit it one time. And for the rest of the relationship, the man is only showing how much he cares about you every year when these stupid ass holidays come up. You know what I mean? I'm not bitter. I'm not mad. I'm just letting y'all know. Men don't give a fuck about a Valentine's Day, but we do it because we love y'all. It is what it is. Y'all got to stop making men prove how much he care about y'all when these days come up, man. Because we, you know what I mean? We, we prove it. 365 days of the year, man. We prove it all throughout the year. We don't got to prove it just when these holidays come up, man. Y'all are too petty when y'all, you know, when these days come up, man, y'all get real petty because if y'all don't get something on Valentine's Day, man, women start to act real petty and start to be in their feelings. Y'all got to understand, man. When a man is on his grind, he's trying to achieve his goals and dreams, man, he ain't got time to be celebrating these fake-ass holidays every year. But like I said, we do it because we know y'all care about it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, and we care about y'all, so we got to participate whether we like it or not. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So, fellas, I got y'all back. I'm going to let these ladies know. We don't care about these holidays, man. You know what I mean? We don't give a damn. If I want to buy flowers on a regular day, that's what I'm going to do. You feel me? So I, I do something a little different. I buy my flowers on the 12th. I don't wait till the 14th. I buy my shit days 
before Valentine's Day to let her know, listen, it ain't about the Valentine's Day, man. If I want to buy you flowers on a Thursday, on a Friday, on a Saturday, or a Sunday, or a Monday, I'm going to do that because I care about you and I want to show my appreciation. Don't let these man-made holidays fuck you up and make you think I care about you any less if I don't buy you something on Valentine's Day. You feel me? Because I don't care. I don't think you care about me any less when you don't buy me no flowers. If a female don't buy me no flowers on Valentine's Day, I'm not going to be tripping. I'm not going to be saying, damn, you don't care about me. Damn, you ain't showing no affection. Damn, you don't show your appreciation. I'm not going to be whining and, you know what I mean, caring about that shit, man. Real niggas don't give a fuck about that shit. You feel me? You can get me a pair of socks. You can get me some boxes. You can get me whatever you feel like you want to get me on that day. I'm going to appreciate it because you know what? Shit, you got me something. It's the thought that counts, not the gift. You feel me? Me, that's just me. I'm a simple man. I ain't really need too much, man. You feel me? Long as you show me that love and affection 365 days of the year, shit, it's all good, man. That one day ain't going to change nothing. But for some of you women, like I said out there, y'all take those days serious. Let your man have a break. Don't take it too hard. Don't be too hard on him if he was not able to get you what you wanted on Valentine's Day. I know you wanted that Chanel bag. I know you wanted that uh, Gucci bag. I know you want... Anybody still wear Gucci bags? I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't think nobody still wear Gucci bags. But if you do, uh, I think that shit played out by now. You know what I mean? YSL, Gucci. Um, no, YSL, cool. YSL is cool. Gucci is out of here. Coach, out of here. Um, yeah, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, you know, I, I can't keep up with all the bags. I know they got a lot of different type of bags out there, you feel me? But don't trip on your man because he, he didn't buy you the Chanel bag you wanted. You understand? Your birthday coming up, he might get it for you on your birthday. Just, just understand, Valentine's Day is just a light day. You show... You know, a little bit of your appreciation by buying some chocolate, you buy some flowers, you get a hotel, you sprinkle the rose petals all over the bed. You do all the fly shit that, you know what I mean, that she likes, you know what I'm saying? So you can get some pussy at the end of the night. Because they believe, in their mind, the pussy is the reward for us on Valentine's Day. But listen, we get that shit throughout the year. We need something else other than that on Valentine's Day. That's just my opinion. You feel me? My opinion don't mean nothing to you if that ain't what you want to do. You dig? But this episode is all about how to overcome failure. You feel me? A lot of us are dealing with failed relationships. We sticking by the side of our partner because of the potential we see in them. But let me tell you this, man. A lot of times, the potential that you see in your partner is usually the potential that you may see in yourself. Let me say that again, because you might miss it. The potential you see in someone else is often the potential that you subconsciously see in yourself. Take people for who they are. They are not the person that you perceive them to be. They showed you who they are already. Stop trying to mix it to fix it. They are not that person you think they are. Take them as face value. You understand? I stopped trying to change people a long time ago. I just changed myself, move forward, be an example, and hopefully they could learn from the steps that I'm taking and the moves that I'm making. But I'm not going to waste my time trying to change somebody to make them be something that they're not. A lot of people don't want to work on themselves. It's a struggle for personal development, man. You understand? It's a struggle for them. People don't want to change. They want to stay the same and remain the same because it's easier being who they are. They're comfortable just being stagnant. You got to understand, man, if there's 10 people that are physically lazy, there's 10,000 with a stagnant mind. And a stagnant mind is the breathing ground for fear. And ignorance and fear are twin sisters. They're always together. I'm going to say that one more time for the people that ain't listening in the back. All my life I heard the expressions, you got to fake it to make it. But I never really subscribed to that concept because I believe you got to think it to make it. See, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, he can achieve. Change your mind and you can change your life. Take a whiff, I'm the sh uh, I'm the black rich, you rich. Uh, do it all on my own. Uh, I ain't never need a Because uh, it's all in the wrist. Uh, she in love with the 
sniff. I'm in love with the bricks. Like I'm short, like I'm thick. Make a bust like the rhyme. Only hit it one time. And I'm gonna say it real slow. For every 10 people that are physically lazy, there's 10,000 others that are out there with stagnant mind. And a stagnant mind is a breathing ground for fear and ignorance and fear are twin sisters. They are always together. That's why the Bible said an idle mind is a devil's playground. You feel me? An idle mind is the devil's playground. You always got to be moving towards your goals and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve in life. You can't be staying idle. You got to keep on moving. You got to keep on reaching for something for higher heights. Do you know how many people got tricked out of their relationships, tricked off to the streets because they had an idle mind and they let negative thoughts seep in and they start to think negative and start to conjure up all type of ideas about their relationship and what the partner's doing and what they not doing and they start to think about all these ways of how this person could be deceiving them and how they could be cheating and how, could, how they could be manipulating them and they start to trick themselves out of their position in their relationship. I always say if you play your position you will never lose your place. A lot of niggas got tricked off to the streets because they had an idle mind. They start thinking about things in a negative way and they start doing negative things. And what happened? They end up in jail and they lose their liberty and in, in freedom. They lose their liberty in society. You always got to be working towards something. You can't have an idle mind. You also can't have your money laying idle. Bitcoin went up to 52000 You haven't invested yet. Why? Because you got your money laying down idle, not making money for you. You playing. You missing the boat. You're not in awareness. You're not seeing what's going on. You go to the airport. What's happening? Everybody is taking what? Cards. Why? Because they trying to eliminate cash. I say cash is king. You can't eliminate that. But they will eventually. You understand? So you got to jump on board. You got to understand digital currency. Even if we still have cash Digital currency is going to be at the forefront. That's where they're going with it. That's why when you go to a lot of places, they're not accepting cash no more. So you got to understand, Bitcoin is going to be plan B. You got to get ready and prepare for plan B. That's digital gold. Yeah, Bitcoin is digital gold. So you got to invest in that. That's what I'm doing. Everybody always want to ask me, what am I investing in? What am I doing? What am I putting my money into? Well, let me let you know what I'm putting my money into. I'm putting my money into Bitcoin. You dig? Yeah, I got to get into that, man. I got a course about it as well, too. I dropped a few uh, months ago, maybe a year ago. Either way, I've been campaigning for Bitcoin. I've been letting people know that even if you put $20 a week, $20 a day, $5 a day, it doesn't matter. You don't have to own a whole piece of Bitcoin. You can own a fraction of it. You can own a 0.1% of it. You feel me? And that $5 will eventually be $10, which will eventually be $20, which eventually be $100 someday. Because it's at $52,000 right now. It dropped all the way to $11,000 about a few months ago. You still didn't invest it. Why? Because you got an idle mind. You playing around. You're not understanding what's going on around you. I told y'all before, you got to always be in awareness. So you have to see opportunities. You got to have you got to have depth of vision. Depth of vision. If you see an acorn, what do you see? Some may, some people might say, well, uh if, if if I see an acorn, then that means a forest is nearby. When I see an acorn, you know what I see? I see wood that builds houses. You understand? You got to have depth of vision. You got to understand what's going on around you. We about to go into a digital age. That's where we going to, man. You got Cash App. Go on Cash App. Get, you got Coinbase. You got Robinhood. Go on there right now and have a weekly setup where you can purchase Bitcoin for five dollars every week you don't care what the amount of bitcoin has risen to you don't care if it dropped you don't care if it rose to a hundred thousand you don't give a damn where's that you buy piece 
of Bitcoin because sooner or later it's going to get so expensive that it's going to discourage you from even getting involved at all. So right now it's 52,000. By the time I drop this video, who knows? It might be, you know, to 40,000 or it might be to 60,000. Either way, get involved. All right? Can't say I never told you. So back on track. Like I said again, to try is the first attempt to fail. Winners don't try, winners do. Now say it with me, I will, I can, and I want to. I'm gonna say that again, but I'm gonna say it in reverse. Now say it with me, I want to, I can, I will. I'm gonna say it slower just for the people that ain't listening in the back. I want to, I can, and I will. Because whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, he can achieve. Whatever you want in life, you can achieve. You just have to have the will to do it. That's about it. You know what I mean? You got to have the willpower to do it. Overcoming failure. Everybody fails. It's a part of life. That's just what it is. You can't escape failure. Let me get some water real quick. My throat get a little parched. You know what I mean? What's up, Prince? You all right? You chilling? All right, chill out. Check it out. Every adversity carries with it the seed of an equivalent benefit. That temporary defeat is not failure until you accept it to be failure. I'm going to say that again. Every Adversity carries with it a seed of an equivalent benefit. That temporary defeat is not failure until it has been accepted by you. Michael Jordan missed 12,345 shots in his entire NBA career. Kobe Bryant missed 14,481 shots in his entire NBA career. How many times you took a shot at your dreams and miss before you gave up? They say, when the goings get tough, the tough get going. But a lot of you motherfuckers failed once or twice and gave up already. And that's the problem. Y'all give up too easy. Y'all got to keep on shooting, man. How you think Kobe scored 81 points in that game? He keep on shooting, man. He didn't care about the miss. Nobody cares or remember the times you failed or the times you miss. How many times you went at a female to get a number and she shot you down? If I ask you that female's name or describe the way she looked or how she looked when you first seen her, you wouldn't be able to do so. You totally forgot her out of your memory bank. Because you only remember the women that told you yes. That's it. You only remember the people that tell you yes. You don't remember the people that tell you no. You think I remember every female that told me I couldn't get their number? Which ain't really much. Because every time I talk to somebody, they definitely want to give me their number. If I don't get that, I get the Instagram. It's just, that's just me, though. But for you, you niggas out there. Do you remember the female that told you no? No, you don't remember her. She's null and void. She's out of your memory bank. The only person you remember is the woman that told you yes and the woman that gave you some at the end of the day. That's the only one we care about. You did? That's the only one we tell our homeboys about. So again, how many times you took a shot at your dreams before you gave up? Ask yourself that. You have to sit down and you got to talk to yourself. Feel me? It's okay to ask yourself a question and answer yourself. So you got to be crazy, but you can't act crazy. Know what I mean? You got to think on a, another level. See, logic is stopping you from achieving your goal. You too smart for your own good. Some of this shit don't make a lot of sense to some people. But for you, you have to trick yourself into believing that you can make Something out of nothing. Because everything says you can't make it happen. The facts is 
You're not where you want to be. You don't have the money you need to invest in your dreams and your goals. Everything says you can't make it happen. So what you got to do, you got to think outside the box. Because if your attitude is right, the facts don't count. So you have to start to process things in a way that defies logic. Sometimes you can't use logic. Because sometimes this shit is spiritual. But a lot of times it's spiritual, to be honest with you. So I talk to myself a lot. I am my own best company. You feel me? I, I, I got to get situated and suited for y'all, for y'all to really get what I'm saying. I am my best friend. I talk to myself very often. And I answer myself too because all of the answers are within me. I don't have to talk to nobody else or get counsel from someone else because the answers are within me. Now, if I have a problem that I can't solve, that my thinking has created that I cannot solve, then I speak to one of my mentors and I get their opinions and their advice. But ultimately, I make my own decisions. You feel me? Because I know the answers. I just have to tap into the higher power, tap into myself, which is me, because I'm connected to the higher power, right? I just got to tap into that and, and get the answers. And I download it from the collective consciousness. I'll tell y'all more about that <laughs> at a later date. But regardless of the fact of the matter, right? Like I said, again, people ask me all the time, how do I overcome failure? See, I overcome failure by understanding this. I don't let a win get to my head or a loss get to my heart. I'm going to say that one more time for the people that ain't listening. People ask me all the time, how do I overcome failure? I overcome failure by not letting a win get to my head or a loss get to my heart. When I achieve a goal, I succeed doing something or maybe get an award for something, I don't go out and celebrate and act like I am holier than thou and I'm the biggest man around town. I don't go out and celebrate. I keep on working because there's more to be done. There's more things that I want to achieve. And when I fail, like I have a failed relationship or I want to achieve something and I failed at achieving it, I just keep on going at it. And I keep on going until I succeed. But if I have a failed relationship, I'm cool. I'm okay because I know that I gave it my all. I don't trip when I have a failed relationship because I know I tried to help her physically, mentally, and spiritually. I poured positive energy into her. Now, some of these motherfucking women you can't save. It is what it is. They got a lot of trauma they got to deal with, and you can't carry the cross for them. They got to carry that themselves. Not everybody want to work on themselves. Some people are comfortable with the bare minimum. They're comfortable in their toxic energy. And if that's not you, then you keep it moving. Even if I see the potential in them, I'm not the one to try to continuously try to beat it out of them. They have to save themselves. I can't save them. Only thing I could do is be an example for them and walk in my truth. See, I deal with failure easily because I'm a winner. So even when I fail, it's not failure to me because I'm learning something in the process. There's a lesson to be learned. I don't have problems. I have situation opportunities and challenges. I'm going to say that one more time. I don't have problems. I have situations, opportunities, and challenges. And I'm always up for a challenge because I'm a competitive person. It's one of the reasons why I don't really like gambling. Being in Vegas, you got to understand that gambling can leave you broke and stuck and fuck. Stay away from the casinos, all right? It's cheaper to buy the drinks because I love a challenge. And anytime I gamble and I lose, I'm always trying to win. So I go back home, get more cash, or go to the ATM and get more cash, and I, and I try to beat the house. But the house never lose. You can't beat the house. So it's better, you better off just buying a drink and, and, and forget about the free drinks that they give you when you playing Baccarat or you want the roulette table. You got to understand, man, the house never lose. 
A lot of people have lost the mortgage, lost the house, coming to Vegas thinking that they're going to win some money and, 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 and they're going to be able to come up. You know what I mean? But this is not the place to do it. You feel me? It's cheaper to buy the drinks. But I say that to say this. I don't look at failure as a problem. I understand it's a situation, opportunity, and a challenge. I have an opportunity to figure out a problem that I've created. You know what I mean? It's just a small, minor situation that I can fix if I just sit down and I think. That's the thing that they don't want you to do. They don't want you to think. They want to steal your thoughts. That's why they have social media grabbing your thoughts at every minute, every second. But it's good that you're listening to this content because this is positive content that is going to fuel you and give you the inspiration and the motivation that you need. So this is the type of content that you need to be uh, listening to every day because you want to create new patterns and new habits. Right. So that's what I'm always working on. New habits. New routines. And we all have a routine, right? Some of us have routines where we go on the phone as soon as we wake up. Some of us, some of us have a routine where we pray, right? When we wake up, we thank the Lord for opening up or not. We thank the Lord for another day, right? And, you know, some of us, we meditate. But whatever your routine is, make sure it's a positive one. Don't go on the phone and have a negative conversation with somebody when you first wake up. Don't look at Instagram when you first wake up. See, all of you out there right now have a routine that you do every day, whether you know it or not. Why not make it a positive routine? Why not make it a routine that's going to raise your vibration? Because you got to understand everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. So you have to always be trying to raise your vibration. That's why I'm always consistently learning and educating myself. Because the more I educate myself, the more I learn, I can give you more information. I can give you more of the wisdom that I've obtained throughout my week or my month or throughout the year. I'm always trying to educate myself. Personal development is very important for me every day. See, the reason why it's important for me is because I don't want to look like none of you niggas, man. I don't want to be basic. A lot of you motherfuckers out there basic. A lot of you niggas, man. Just got to keep it all the way 1,000. See, when I decided to switch from braids to waves, I made sure that I don't want to have basic, I don't want to have a basic low haircut, man. I wanted to have 360 waves. Feel me? Let me say that one more time in case y'all not really, really understanding what I'm trying to say. When I decided to say, man, I'm going to cut my motherfucking hair low and I'm going to have waves, I said, man, I want, I don't just want to have any type of waves. I want to have the most sickest waves known to man. I want to have 360 all around beehive waves. I want to be the wave god. Know what I mean? I don't want nothing basic. I don't want to look like none of you niggas out there. Now, you have to search far and wide before you can find another nigga with waves like mine. You feel me? There's a few niggas that got waves on the top of their head. There's a few niggas got waves on the side of their head, but they don't got it all around their head in a beehive circle of motion. See, it's all about being the best I can be, the best version of me. When I go to the gym, I work out so I can have the best physique that I can possibly have. I don't want to look like none of you niggas. I don't want to look flabby and sick like Larry Holmes. Nah. Know what I mean? A lot of you niggas is 21, 23 and got pop bellies, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of you niggas talking big shit, popping big shit, acting like a bitch should be on your dick, and a lot of you niggas ain't really looking your best, man. You're 23 looking like you're 43, man. And that's what's... <laughs> shit ain't looking right, man. You feel me? A lot of you niggas, like I said again, man, 22 years old, losing your motherfucking hair. It's hard out here for a lot of you niggas, man. Life is beating y'all up, stressing y'all out. You know what I mean? How you 23, man, and you look older than me? It don't make sense, man. Because life is beating y'all up. The woman that you with is stressing you out. She's sucking the life out of you, man. I don't want to look nothing like none of you niggas, man. That's why personal development is important for me. 
I'm always educating myself because I want to be a step ahead of all of you motherfuckers, man. Yeah, I got to be a step ahead, man, because niggas is slick out there, man. They got new schemes, new hustle. They trying different ways to triple cross you. Fuck a double cross. They want to triple cross you. So you got to be a step ahead. So you always got to educate yourself, man. And you got to watch out. You got to read their vibration as soon as they walk in the room. You got to know who you're dealing with. It takes me two seconds to read a person's vibration. I don't got to talk to them for a long period of time. All I need is two seconds and I can tell if you're a fuck nigga or if you're a fuck bitch. That's it. All it, gotta, all, it, all it takes is three seconds for me to read your vibration. That's it. I'm going to tell if you're a nigga that's up to no good or if I'm going to tell if you're a female that's trying to just take me for whatever I got. You know what I mean? I can spot a gold digger from a mile away. I don't mind you. I, I let you do your thing. I let you think you could, you know what I mean, be able to get in my pockets. But, uh... I'm not that type of nigga, man. Feel me? When I was young, I ain't never did trick or treating. My mother and my father never took me out tricking or treating, so psh, tricking ain't in my bloodline. All my life, I heard the expressions, you gotta fake it to make it. But I never really subscribed to that concept because I believe you gotta think it to make it. See, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, he can achieve. Change your mind, and you can change your life. Take a whip, I'm the sh uh, I'm the black rich, you rich. Uh, do it all on my own. Uh, I ain't never need a because uh, it's all in the bricks. Uh, she in love with the sniff. Uh, I'm in love with the bricks. Uh, like I'm short, like I'm thick. What? Make a bust like the rhyme. What? Only hit it one time. I'm going to say that one more time. When I was younger, my parents never took me tricking or treating. So tricking ain't in my bloodline, man. So when I meet a gold digger, man, I take it for what it is, man. You know what I mean? I brush off and move to the side. I don't knock what she doing. I salute the hustle. I see what it is. But like I said again, it's all about personal development for me. I don't want to be nothing like none of you niggas out there, man. So I'm constantly working on myself. And I'm not comparing myself to the next man. I just look at what niggas is doing and do the opposite. That's it. I don't want to follow, you know what I mean, the rat race. I don't want to follow the trend. I want to be the trend. You know what I mean? I, like Jay-Z said, don't follow the flow. Be the flow. You know what I mean? And that brings me to the meaning of flow for me. Flow is just energy and motion. We was not meant to struggle. Struggle is effort laced with emotion. We was not meant to struggle. And if you are going to struggle, you want to have productive struggle. What I mean by that is this. It's going to be a struggle for you to change the way you think. It's going to be a struggle for you to change your routine, your lifestyle, your habits. But it's going to be productive. Because you know what you're doing? You're re-engineering yourself. You're designing yourself and designing yourself the best version of yourself. You're designing the best version of yourself. So you're going to be reading more. You're going to be meditating more. You're going to be praying more. You're going to be talking to yourself more so you can understand you. You're going to stop overthinking. And when you do think, you're going to think positive. It's going to be a struggle. It's not going to be easy because it's going to take effort, but it's productive struggle. So get familiar with productive struggle. Don't just go through life struggling in a negative way that's pulling you down. Struggle on the way up. You understand? Productive struggle. I'm always working on myself and it's not easy. Like I said, again, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle to stop eating the things that you're eating. You love In-N-Out. You love McDonald's. You love Cane's. You love Popeye's. You love KFC. You've been eating it for 23 years. Yeah. But it's time to change your whole routine up because it's not looking good. It's weighing down on you. You can see it in your face. I can see it in your body structure, your physical physique. You don't run as fast as you used to. You don't glow as much as you used to. You know what I mean? The light has left your body. The vibration has left your body. 
And that's because what you putting in your body. I always say a person that don't control what they put in their body can't control their emotions. The most unstable, the most emotionally unstable person is the people who have poor diets. They don't care about what they eat. So you eat like a savage, so you act like a savage. You wondering why you can't control your emotions? Change your diet. I guarantee you will be more balanced. You'll be more, you know what I mean, mellow and smooth and more easygoing. You won't get mad and agitated so easily. Your diet is the problem. A lot of you women out there, you have attitude problems. Why? Because of your diet. If you change your diet, you won't be so quick to want to fight somebody as soon as they step on your shoes or as soon as they piss you off or as soon as they say something you don't like. A lot of people are in jail right now because of words, because they wasn't in control of their emotions. You got to be able to be in control of your emotions at all times. You understand? A lot of people got tricked out of their position, man. And a lot of times, those same people don't want to take accountability for their actions. Know what I mean? You know how many relationships that I've been in that failed but the women don't want to take no accountability for her action and the reason why we didn't work out. Not one woman in my life have ever said to me, you know what? I was young. I was immature. I was prideful. I was letting my ego get the best of me. I was letting my mom play tricks on me. We could have worked it out, but I just couldn't see the bigger picture. And that caused our relationship to fizzle out and me no longer be with you. And I see you doing your thing and you doing good. I'm proud of you. And I would like to say I apologize for the way I acted and behaved in the past. And hopefully we can move forward and maybe rekindle the lost flame that we had. Not one woman of ever in my life spent the block and took accountability for their actions. They always blame me for the relationship not working out and for us not standing at the test of time, always, not one, ever took accountability. And if you look at our life, right, you look at my life and you look at their life, I'm consistently progressing. They're not. They're on a spiral downward. So obviously, it's your attitude in the way you think, in the way you carry yourself is the reason why you're not progressing in life. I can't be that bad of a person if I'm continuously progressing after we, you know what I mean, fizzle out and our relationship didn't work. But none of them has taken accountability for us not working out. And it's okay. I don't expect them to. I understand most people are prideful and they don't want to take accountability for their actions. And sometimes they don't think they... They made a mistake. Sometimes they feel like, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? They feel like they was in the right. And there's a lot of people out there right now that's, you know what I mean, in fair relationships or uh, uh, a relationship ended because of a petty argument. Because a lot of this shit be petty at the end of the day anyway. Keep it all the way above. A lot of times relationships fail. Most of the time it's over some petty shit. It's always over something that someone didn't do that the other person wanted that person to do. It's always some petty shit. It's not really no big issue on why most relationships end up not working out. If the two parties come together and actually have a conversation and hear each other out, actually listen while the other person is talking and not just listening to respond, they possibly can figure their situation out and get to the root of the problem. But the problem is most people don't sit down and actually have a conversation and have positive dialogue with each other. So they never come to a common ground or never come to, to a resolution. You know what I mean? Because they don't know how to communicate with each other. And I got to say this, right? Side note. Have you ever been in a relationship with a person that their logic was so far out there that 
they start to make you feel like you're tripping? Let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. Have you been with a person that y'all might not be seeing eye to eye and they trying to have you to see that point of view and you're trying to have them see your point of view and then you start to question your point of view because that point of view is so far out there. It's like, damn, this person is actually tripping. She not really understanding or he not really understanding what I'm saying or what I mean. And then when you talk to someone else, you, you kind of break it down and they like, I get what you're saying. And then it makes you feel like you're tripping. It makes you feel like your point of view is, you know what I mean? Not making sense. I hope I'm explaining this correctly because it's very, you know what I mean? It's a tricky scenario. It's a, it's a scenario that I've been in a lot of times in my uh, uh, relationships where, you know, a person has a certain point of view and it's like, it gets to a point where they make you feel like, man, you bugging for having your own type of point of view, right? And the way you see things. And, 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 that, and, that's, and that's when you know you're in a toxic relationship, when they start to make you question your sanity. That's how you know when you're in a toxic relationship, when your logic is not making sense to you because they're constantly disregarding what you're saying in your thought process, in the way you're perceiving the information, in the way you're translating the information and conveying the information to that person. I hope I, I, hope I didn't lose y'all in that particular scenario. But I just wanted to know if anybody else experienced these type of things, and I'm sure y'all have. I'm positive. You know what I mean? But that's a clear, a clear way to know that you're in a toxic relationship. When somebody make you feel like you're bugging when you know you're right and you know you ain't tripping but they so toxic and their manipulation game is so strong that they make you feel like you tripping right but we can't always blame them because a lot of times you don't get what you want you get who you are I'm going to say that again. You don't get what you want, you get who you are. So a lot of times, the people that we end up in a relationship with are just layers of the people that we are. You know what I mean? Or the person that we used to be. And it's a reason we met that person. And either we can help them be a better version of themselves, or either there's a message or something that we need to learn within that relationship. It's something that we need to learn. Remember what I told y'all. Life is 100% educational. We're always learning in this game of life. It's all about experiences and education. You're consistently learning. So don't always be upset that the relationship did not work out, it's okay. It's cool, there's no problem. Now you can go back to the drawing board and tweak and work on what you really need. My man, you can really define what you really want. Now you know what you don't want because you just experienced it. You can turn your back on it and move forward and, and look towards the future and go after somebody or hopefully meet somebody that you really truly want, because now you get to find it better. So it's a blessing that you didn't work out with that person that you was in love with. Nothing happens to you, it happens for you. You gotta understand that. That brings me to the story about the Chinese man and his son, right? One day the Chinese man and his son was out there working on the field and the farm and they had a bunch of horses, right? And they was gathering up the horses and the Chinese man's son fell off the horse and broke his leg. So one of the Chinese man's friend came over and said, man, it's such an unfortunate event that your son fell off the horse and broke his leg. So the father said, it's not an unfortunate event or a fortunate event. It just is what it is. And then later that week, the Chinese army 
came around to gather up civilians to join the army. But they couldn't take that father's son because his son had a broken leg, right? And then the homeboy came over again and said, man, it's definitely a fortunate event that your son wasn't drafted into the army because he had a broken leg. And the father said, it's not a fortunate event or unfortunate event. It is what it is. And that's how you got to understand life. That's how you got to go through life. Understanding that nothing happens to you, it happens for you. There's a blessing in disguise. Like I said again, that unfortunate event that you may think is bad or negative is actually something positive inside of that event. Every adversity carries with it the seed of an equivalent benefit. I got to say that again. I want you to really write this down and remember this. Every adversity carries with it the seed of an equivalent benefit. That temporary defeat is not failure until it has been accepted by you. Long as you don't accept failure and you keep on persevering, your success. You dig? Because success breeds confidence. Confidence creates activity. Activity creates habits. Habits creates results. And the result is you get what you've been trying to pursue. I'm going to say that one more time. Success builds confidence. Confidence creates activity. Activity creates habits. Habits creates results. That's called the success momentum cycle. That's something that you need to learn, you need to study, and that's the cycle that you need to write down, and that's the cycle that you need to be on every day. You feel me? When I wrote my book, I said if I sell one book, I'm a success. That's it. And if I can do that, I've achieved my goal. I sold one book, and I said, damn, if I sold one, I could sell two. Fuck it. Let's go. I just repeated the activity. Remember what I said? Success builds confidence. I got the confidence once I sold one book. Then what I did, I repeated the activity because what? Confidence creates activity. And then after that, <laughs> activity creates what? A habit. It became a habit. And I started selling more and more books. Then I received the results. What are the results? I got paid cash. I received money. I got what I wanted. I sold the book and I turned a profit. There's ROI return on investment. I invested my time, my money, and my effort, and I got a return on my investment because I follow the success momentum cycle. Ain't nobody giving you this game like I'm giving it to you, man. Y'all better put res some respect on my motherfucking name like baby said, man. Put some respect on my name, man. Niggas ain't giving it to you like I'm giving it to you, man. Make sure you like right now, man. Like and share and subscribe if you haven't subscribed, man. Stop playing with me, man. Y'all better stop playing with me, man. All my life I heard the expressions, you gotta fake it to make it. But I never really subscribed to that concept because I believe you gotta think it to make it. See, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, he can achieve. Change your mind and you can change your life. Take a whiff, I'm the sh uh, I'm the black rich you rich. Uh, do it all on my own. Uh, I ain't never need a because uh, it's all in the wrist. Uh, she in love with the sniff. Uh, I'm in love with the bricks. Uh, like I'm short, like I'm thick. What? Make a bust like the rhyme. What? Only hit it one time. Okay. I'm going to give y'all some time, man. I'm going to give y'all some time. Like, share, and subscribe right now. You feel me? See, I give you the game this niggas ain't giving you out there, man. Most street niggas don't know the type of information I know, man. They don't know what I know. That's why they can't give you what I'm giving you, man. You feel me? All of their game is watered down. You dig?
They game watered down, man. Niggas giving you that game from 19 old long, man. I'm giving you that shit new, improved, laced with shit that you really can use in your daily life right now. The information I'm going to give you, man, is going to change your life long as you apply it. Like I said, knowledge is power, but only if it's used. Use knowledge, you dig? You got to use the knowledge I'm giving you. Don't just listen to what I'm saying and just letting it fall on deaf ears. If I'm telling you something, man, and you find value in it, trust me, if you apply it, you're going to see the results that you're looking for. Don't get mad at me if you don't see the results you're looking for because you're not applying it, man. I apply it every day, man. It's all about personal development. Failure does not exist in my mind. You feel me? To try is the first attempt to fail. Winners don't try. We do. We get it done. And we continuously work on it until it's accomplished. That's it. Period. You know what I mean? A lot of y'all gave up already, man. And then y'all giving up because life is hard. Our parents didn't give us the manuscript on how to be an adult. It's challenging being an adult. I know I am an adult. I remember when I was young and I had to accept the fact that I was an adult. It was definitely shocking to me. I didn't really want to embrace the a fact that I was an adult. I wanted to stay young forever, which I am going to be young forever because I just, you know, I vibrate a young vibration, a young spirit, a young, you know, energy. You feel me? But I read somewhere that said after 30, every year after 30, you lose a bit of your ambition, right? And that's what's happening with a lot of people. They're getting older in age and they're losing more and more of their ambition. But you got to find that drive somewhere. You got to have a purpose that's bigger than you. See, if you're just doing it for yourself, ah, you might get burned out quick. But if you find your why and you have something that fuels you, whether it's your kid, whether it's your mom, whether it's your father, whether it's your girlfriend, whether it's your wife, whatever it is, you got to find that drive. Find that why. Why do you go forward? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you continue to persist? You got to find that why. When you look in your baby's eye, you look in your daughter's eye, your son's eye, that gives you the why to keep on going forward even in adversity. You keep on being persistent. You keep on knocking and knocking until they open that door. People are so negative, they're going to tell you no seven times before they tell you, well, yes, I heard that from my man Les Brown, so I got to repeat it. If you haven't listened to Les Brown, you got to check him out. He's one of the best motivational speakers in the world. He gives me the motivation that I need to keep on moving forward. These are the things and the people that I listen to to help me stay in a positive mind state. You feel me? And I'm sharing it with y'all. You got to find out why. You feel me? Like I said again, every year after 30, we lose more and more of our ambition. So you got to work harder on finding that reason why you keep on going after your goals even after you miss a hundred shots of trying to achieve it. A hundred times you failed, but you kept on going. Never gave up. Killer Mike just won a Grammy. He won three Grammys, actually, at the age of 48. 48 years old. He won three Grammys. They always used to say rap is a young man's sport. If you don't know who Killer Mike is, he's from Atlanta, you need to Google him, check him out, dope-ass MC. He won three Grammys this year. Why? Because he didn't give up. He didn't listen to all the negative talks about rap is an old man's sport, hip-hop is dead, hip-hop is dying. He put out that album independently. He had a few partners with him that helped with the distribution and the promotion. But he invested 500000 of his own hard-earned cash into his music and put it out and won three Grammys at 48. Man, listen, man. It ain't nothing you can't fucking do, man. 
some of you motherfuckers out there 30 and 25 and 26 and you gave up already. You gave up on life. Yeah, because, wow, being an adult is hard. Yeah, being an adult is hard. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy. This shit ain't easy at all, man. Being an adult is fucking hard, man. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure on our shoulders, man. Especially being a man out here, man. See, a woman can get by looking beautiful because they got pretty privileges, right? But a lot of you ugly niggas, man, I know you got it hard out here, man. Y'all niggas got it hard. See, I can get by a little bit because I'm kind of decent. I look a little, you know what I mean? Some of the women find me attractive, so they let me get by with a little bit of this shit I be doing, you dig? But I know you ugly niggas got it hard out there, man. You got to buy designer clothes. You got to wear designer shoes. You got to take bitches at places you can't afford. You got to do things that you know you ain't in the tax bracket to do, but you got to fake it to make it. A lot of y'all doing that out there, man. Ladies, you got to take it easy on some of these guys out here, man. It ain't, it, listen, it ain't, listen, life is beating them down enough. That's why I always tell a woman when she come in my life, I don't want you to hold me down, man. I want you to lift me up. I'm going to say that again, man. When a woman come in my life, I tell her, I don't want you to hold me down. I want you to lift me up, man, because life is beating me down enough. When I step outside of my doors and I go to face life in the real world, I'm faced with so much adversity. I'm faced with niggas hating. I'm faced with police profiling. I'm faced with racism. I'm faced with so much on a daily basis. When I come home and I need my woman to lift me up. I want her to pour into me positive words of affirmation. I want her to pour life into me. Give me peace. Give me that respect. Give me that space I need. You understand? Because I might need five minutes to just woosah. I need two minutes just to, just to be in my own thoughts and be in my own energy. Because the world is draining. And a lot of women don't understand that. They don't sympathize with men. What I'm just trying to let y'all ladies know right now, I'm going to ask y'all nicely, man. Take it easy on your man. He's going through a lot. You know what I mean? He's going through a lot. He got to compete with other men just to keep your attention. Because you're watching what everybody else is doing on Instagram. You're watching what's going on with your homegirl. And you comparing your relationship to that. You judging what he's doing based on what that other man is doing for his girl. And he got to deal with that. You might not be saying it to him. But that's what you're thinking. And he knows that. So niggas go out there committing crimes. Niggas go out there doing all type of shit. Just to get the finances they need to impress the woman that he wants. See, it's hard out here for niggas, man. It's not easy. And I'm not, you know what I mean, giving you niggas no breaks. I'm not taking it easy on you niggas. Because some of you niggas are bums and y'all niggas need to step y'all shit up. Yeah, we understand that. Some of you niggas are just lazy and not putting y'all best foot forward. But we not talking about you niggas. We talking about the niggas that's actually trying. That's actually applying themselves. That's trying to make it happen. But life is, you know what they say, life is life in. Yeah, life is life in. You know what I mean? And we face with a lot of adversity when we step outside of these doors, man. Just to make it back home safe and sound is a blessing. And a lot of these women don't understand that. They don't know the cross that we carrying. You understand? It gets heavy on our, it gets heavy on our chest sometimes. I know. I'm a man that's successful and I'm doing my motherfucking thing, but I deal with the shit as well. On every levels in life, we dealing with some type of shit, man. The richest man in Babylon is dealing with something right now, man. You feel me? From the poorest man to the richest man, we all are dealing with some sort of adversity, some sort of challenge, some sort of situation we trying to figure out, right? 
So I'm just asking you ladies just to bear with us, understand that sometimes we're gonna need space to just be in our own thoughts and think. That don't mean we love you any less. That don't mean we're neglecting you. We just need time to think so we can figure out and map this thing out correctly so we can secure the bag and secure the future for both of us. Because it's not a me thing, it's a we thing. That's the mentality you got to have when you're moving forward, man. You feel me? That's the mentality that I move forward with. And sometimes people ain't going to understand the vision. They're not going to see the vision. Do you know how many women I've been with that didn't see my vision, man? They can't imagine me right now speaking to millions of people on my podcast and influencing the masses of the people out there in the world, man. They could have never seen this for me because they didn't see my vision. They didn't understand. But the vision was meant for me, not for her. So I, I, I forgive her. I'm not mad at them for not seeing the vision. But they hit me up and they tell me, keep doing your thing. I see you out there. They tell me. They show props. They give props where props is due. Because it's hard not to give props because I'm in your face. The world is sharing my content. The world is embracing my content. And I appreciate every, each and every one of y'all. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for sharing my content. Don't stop. Keep putting it out there because it ain't too many niggas like me giving you this game. It ain't. Trust me. Y'all know it. So to keep me going, to keep me motivated, y'all share the content. Y'all support. Y'all go to the Patreon. Support the Patreon. Sign up. You know what I mean? Y'all hit the super chat on YouTube. Donate something, whatever it is, every dollar counts. You know what I mean? Every dollar counts. Support the platform because, like I said again, it ain't too many niggas out here giving you the information that I'm giving you. And y'all want me to keep it coming, right? Show me some love. You dig? It's a give and take relationship. Don't be selfish. Do not be selfish. You've been selfish all your motherfucking life. When last you gave somebody something. When last you did something nice for somebody. Start the day. Like, subscribe, donate, join the Patreon, show some motherfucking love. Don't be out here bullshitting, just taking and not giving back. I've given you value, and you know that, right? You know that, right? Y'all know that, right? And I'm giving y'all more value each and every motherfucking week. I ain't going to stop. I'm going to keep it coming. This episode is about failure and how to overcome failure. We're going to deal with failure throughout our life, but you got to understand you got to have a productive struggle. Be productive. Changing your way of thinking. Because if you continue to think like you've always thought, you continue to get what you've always got. You wondering why you're getting the same shit each and every day and each and every year? Because you're thinking the same. Why are you running into the same type of guys, the same type of women, the same type of people? Because you're thinking the same. So you vibrating the same. So you're feeling the same. So you're getting the same results. You want to change your results? Change your thinking. The Chinese said insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Are you insane? Are you crazy? Are you losing your motherfucking mind out there, man? Really? You keep on doing the same motherfucking thing. You keep on fucking with these same bum ass niggas. You keep on fucking with the same chicks that keep on talking about you in the motherfucking DMs and the motherfucking uh, uh, behind your back. You keep conversing and talking to the same bitches that keep on talking down on you that's not seeing your vision and your dreams. That's not supporting you. Don't speak highly about you. They talk about you negative when they're with their other friends and you still hanging with these bitches. You keep on doing the same thing and you wonder why they keep on playing you and acting like you's a game. Because you're playing yourself. Yeah, you're playing yourself. Associating and hanging around people because you want to be liked. You're scared to be alone. You're afraid to be by yourself. So you keep on being around the people that are not good for you, that are toxic, that are weighing you down. 
that's making you feel insecure. And you're still hanging around them because why? You want to be accepted. You want to be a part of something. You got to accept yourself first, man. Love yourself. Be serious about yourself. Take care of yourself. You know what I mean? Invest in yourself. It's about personal development. Only you can save yourself. Nobody else. A crackhead ain't going to stop taking drugs unless he has the willpower to do it his fucking self. How many niggas smoking crack and snorting coke and smoking weed and doing all kind of weird ass shit? And you think they're going to stop? They're not going to stop. Well, I can't say smoking weed is weird because, you know, weed is whatever, whatever. But you know what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Niggas pop, popping perks, drinking lean. Ain't nobody going to help them kick that shit. They got to have the willpower to do it themselves. So bottom line is, nobody's going to save you. You got to save yourself, man. And that's what I did. And I went out and saved myself because I don't want to be like none of you niggas out there, man. I'm going to keep on shouting it loud and proud. I don't want to be like no other nigga in this motherfucking world. I wouldn't change my position for yours in a heartbeat for nothing. I don't care if you a billionaire, millionaire. I love being who I am because I work damn hard being the version of the person that you see today. I worked hard on this. I saw a vision of who I wanted to be. And I made that come true to life. Because I could be and do and have anything and everything I desire. You dig? I went from wearing baggy jeans and my pants hanging down my ass to putting on a three-piece suit looking as fly as I can be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. I went from wearing baggy jeans with my pants hanging down my ass to putting on a three-piece suit looking fly as a pelican. Listen, man, you don't have to accept where you're at right now. You can actually change who you are right now and be the best version of yourself if you make a decision. Success is just a decision away. I'm going to say that again. Success is just a decision away. All you got to do is just make a decision, man. Stop prolonging it. Make a decision. Anyway, man. <laughs> I had a wonderful time with y'all tonight. It's yours truly, Liquid Cash. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Liquid Cash got a podcast. Like, subscribe, and remember, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Cheers. That was actually good. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Pirates of the Caribbean. Niggas can't fuck with me, man. That boy. It's liquid cash, I need it all out in the stash. I'ma get rich or I'ma get deported. Riding cross country, my four tour.